The Bible was created for the sole purpose of enslaving humanity. The author of the Bible is in the title. It is by ball. I'm going to read you a couple verses that prove my point to a T, and you can read along with me. 1 Peter 2.18 Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. 1 Timothy 6.1 All who are under the yoke of slavery should consider their masters worthy of full respect so that God's name and our teachings may not be slandered. Colossians 3.22 Slaves, obey your earthly master in everything, and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Colossians 4.1 Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Ephesians 6, 5, Slaves, obey your earthly master with respect and fear and sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Ephesians 6, 9, And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. Exodus 21, 32, if the bull gores a man or a female slave, the owner must pay thirty shekels of silver to the master of the slave, and the bull is to be stoned to Exodus 21, 20 and 21. Anyone who beats their male slave or female slave with a rod must be punished if the slave unalives as a direct result. But they are not to be punished if the slave recovers after a day or two, since the slave is their property. Leviticus 25, verse 44 through 46 your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. You may also buy some of their temporary residents living among you and members of their clans born in your country, and they will become your property. You can bequeath them to your children as an inherited property, and you can make them slaves for life, but you must not rule over your fellow Israelites ruthlessly. What? And Exodus 21, 2 through 6. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years, but in the seventh year he shall go free without paying anything. If he comes alone, he is to go free alone. But if he has a wife when he comes, she is to go with him. If the master gives him a wife and she bears him sons of daughters, the woman and her children shall belong to her master, and only the man shall go free. But if the servant declares, I love my master and my wife and children, and do not want to go free, then his master must take him before the judges. He shall take him to the door of the doorpost and pierce his ear with an awl. Then he will be his servant for life. Last but not least, Exodus 21, 2 through 6. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years. But in the seventh year he shall go free, without paying anything. If he comes alone, he is to go free alone. But if he has a wife when he comes, she is to go with him. If his master gives him a wife, and she bears him sons or daughters, the women and, their <laughs> the women and her children shall belong to her master, and only the man shall go free. But if the servant declares, I love my master and my wife and children and do not want to go free, then his master must take him before the judges. He shall take him to the door or the doorpost and pierce his ear with an awl. Then he will be his servant for life. What are they talking about? Just like how they put that ear tag on a, on a cow? What is, this is all in, this is the stuff that they don't teach you this is you're not going to hear this in church well i hope you guys enjoyed the content if you did go ahead and drop a like drop a comment if you knew that there was all this slavery talk in the bible because nobody talks about it and as always boo. i got a lot of hate from my last post talking about how the bible was curated to make people biblical slaves the christians did not like that i was reading verses out of the bible verbatim so they told me that i was taking every single verse out of context i want to make this as simple and easy as possible for you guys to rebuttal and expound upon why when who what where and how it is that i am taking this verse out of context 
Exodus 21, 2 through 6. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years, but in the seventh year he shall go free without paying anything. If he comes alone, he is to go free alone, but if he has a wife when he comes, she is to go with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the woman and her children shall belong to her master, and only the man shall go free. But if the servant declares, I love my master and my wife and children and do not want to go free, then his master must take him before the judge. He shall take him to the door or the doorpost and pierce his ear with an awl. Then he shall be his servant for life. Hey Christians, here's your chance. Prove me wrong. Show me that I, where, when, and how I am taking this verse out of context. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, go ahead and drop a like, drop a comment. If you're like, nah, man, there's too many verses that are exclusively pertaining to slavery to make sense to even be in the Bible. If this man, Jesus, was really about love, light, unity, all this stuff, would he really turn around and be like, hey, 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 don't you forget about your slave masters now. I need you to love them the same way that you love me. No, that was people that had the idea, hey, we could probably use this. We could put it in the Bible. Hey, Jesus said it's in the Bible.